Hello everyone. So in this video, I actually want to do a comparison of the GPS accuracy and heart rate monitor accuracy uh, of two of the Garmin's most popular watches. The over here, it's the Phoenix 5X. Um, and this is not the newest 5X Plus version, which uh, adds GPS uh, Garmin Pay and also uh, ability to pair your music. Um, but this actually have most of the advanced features that uh, Garmin watches uh, was known for. Um, so uh, this is uh, supposed to be their top of the line, you know, uh, from last year. And over here we have the, I think it's Vivo Active 3 music. And uh, this one is also their newest offerings for a different price point. Bracket. This one sells for more like between two hundred to three hundred dollars. Uh, when you find it on sale, it's a really good value. Um, and this one uh, right now, the going price is around uh, I think four hundred fifty dollars to five hundred fifty dollars for the five X model. This is a five X, and it also have it also features a sapphire glass screen, so the screen does not scratch that easily. And this one, the Vivo Active uh, 3 Music, actually have a glass screen and it's curved glass. So if you look closely, you can see the curve around the glass. Now this is uh, actually my wife's watch. Um, she really loves the watch for, you know, the basic activity tracking. And basically this is what it is. It's the activity tracker with some advanced um, activity settings. So basically um, it's a touch screen so you can go up and down and see your heart rate, your current goal and obviously as you can see the touch screen uh, does not register my touch very well maybe because my hand is too dry uh, I don't know but my wife doesn't have any problem with this so keep that in mind and the 5x is a uh, it's a button only uh, device which I actually like a lot like I'm I'm get, so getting used to the buttons when I use a touch screen it feels awkward actually um, but for people who haven't used a button based system the touch screen is actually quite intuitive and easy to use so also keep that in mind um, battery life this one lasts about three to four days and this one lasts about five days to a little more than a week uh, because it's a larger body, uh, it have uh, more battery juice packed inside. And both have the exact same sensor um, underneath the garments Elevate, the newest version uh, they have, I think, or actually last year's newest version because uh, I think the 5X uh, Plus actually features a, a something, something errors um, are I post a description in the link. I I can't call it recall it right away, but it measures your oxygen oxygen level when you're actually going on a on a hike, um, more accurately. So I think it's a blue sensor or something that they also packed inside this uh, elevate uh, heart rate monitor. So uh, both device features the same charger, um, which is the my favorite charger from Garmin. It's super easy to use. Not the click type, but you just basically plug it in. It's like a USB-C port, but like shorter and smaller. Very easy to use. Um, so those are the basic uh, feature sets. So the 5X actually um, is more advanced. They have almost they have almost every um, activity set you can imagine um, when you actually need to go here. Let's see. So I'm just going to go through some of the activities and you can also download extra activities on the internet, by the way, using Garmin Connect. So hike, bike, walk, those are the activities I use the most. Um, and then over here you have navigate, you have track, you have map, you have each heart rate value stress maybe. Uh, and if, you, if I click add, like you can add multi-sport triathlon kind of a thing, a trail run, run, threadmill, indoor climb, bike, in outdoor and mountain bike, pool swim, open water, uh, that's a triathlon, so okay. So it have additional settings for multi-sport. You have ski, you have snowboard, cross-country ski, uh, stand-up pedal boarding, you have rowing, you have rowing indoor, you have golf, true swing, I'm not sure what is that, maybe for golf, uh, project the waypoint, you have swim and run, kayak, strength, cardio, yoga, floor, climb, elliptical, um, stair stepper, jump start, wow, jump master, you have like a <laughs> jump master, that's cool, tactical for like shooting, uh, boating, 
and a whole bunch of other activities you can customize. Like this is pretty much their top of the line. So um, unfortunately, I won't be able to test all the features. Um, if you need to see some of the features, um, the website that I go to for uh, sports watch reviews is dcrainmaker.com. Uh, he does an excellent job of explaining all the basic features of the watch or the advanced features of the watch. And also this supports a whole bunch of different kinds of power meters for cycling, which I don't have, but you know, this supports power meter and this one does not support power meter, I believe. Uh, quote me if I'm wrong. Um, so this is the basic basic activity tracker. Um, it's basic, but it's not that basic. So compared to something like our Vivo Smart, like, you know, this is more graphical interface, color screen, and uh, longer battery life. Uh, and it supports actually more activities with longer battery life. So um, over here, you can see my wife have also some basic activities set over here, but uh, like you can add more activity, like run, biking, door, walking door, floor climb, pool swim, and rowing indoor. And I can add plus, and then it have some more features. I'll go through those really quick. So to have maybe 50% of what the 5X offers, um, but actually to be honest, like for me and my wife, like literally we only use like two or three activities in those watches total. Uh, so to me, it's a little overkill, but then again, um, I love the design of the 5X. It looks more masculine and uh, it, it actually is super comfortable when we're wearing wearing it on the hand and my wife also have this watch on her hand which is like super comfortable because it's a slimmer profile it's smaller and by the way those uh, watch bands are actually um standard watch bands that you can easily replace this one i got from uh archer and um they have different kinds of color bands that's like super easy to remove basically it's like a pin so you unpin it and then put the new band on and boom you have it um the color works looks great i i only wish that for the vivo um vivo smart 3 music they add a white watch face um uh, that that would be more feminine like if if some girls want to watch this uh wear this watch you know uh doing workouts and stuff but uh adding a white band definitely makes it more feminine um so today i'm going to be wearing this this watch on my left hand and this watch on my right hand and I'm gonna turn on the bike mode on both watch and I'm gonna do a small bike uh, riding around the Miami area um, it will be some mixed with some of the streets um, like US one uh, mostly and uh, also uh, past US one I'm gonna be going on to Key Biscayne to do a little small rides along the highway and that will be more open Writing, um, less trees and stuff um, and in the end I'm gonna end this video and uh, export all the data and compare to see if there's any difference between the heart rate accuracy um, and the GPS accuracy um, on the side on the phone I also have Endomondo which is a sports tracker enabled so uh, with that I'm gonna be tracking GPS on my phone as well on the phone the GPS uh, is actually paired with the Endomondo app is paired with my heart rate monitor, my belt strap. Um, so that the heart rate on the belt strap with with Endomondo on the phone should be more accurate than both of the uh, uh, the elevated heart rate sensor measurings. So we'll be comparing the data with the most accurate uh, belt strap, the the uh, chest strap. I'm sorry. Um, the data from Endomondo with chest strap and the data heart rate data from both of the watches and see if there's any difference. Um, so we're gonna get started and uh, I'm gonna come back and update you guys later in, in the video. Okay, so I have both watch on my wrist and uh, I'm ready to start the workout uh, right over here. It's, uh, it's still for trying to find the GPS, so give it a few seconds. Uh, because I reset this watch uh, to factory settings, so it took it a while to find a GPS signal. But once it locks on, it shouldn't have any problems. So as you can see, the heart rate is ready. GPS is ready. Over here, it's same thing. Heart rate is ready and GPS is ready. So uh, over here is my trusty Cannondale Cat 10. One of the best uh, road bikes I've, I've ever owned and uh, super comfortable. So 
I'm gonna have my phone actually set right over here, so it should receive most accurate GPS signal since it's you know widening the open air stationary area. And uh, after the ride, I'm gonna come back and uh, we're gonna take a look at the data and see um, which uh, which watch whether the watch heart rate and GPS is accurate. Okay, so stay tuned and uh, see you in a bit. Hello everyone. So I just finished a. 31 mile bike ride and uh, I just got home so um, looking at the watch um, I actually uh, saved my activities but I'm gonna go inside and load up all the data and then we can take a look at both watch and as well as the um, as well as the the recording from Endomondo uh, cell phone app so we can do a comparison and see uh, what the final result is um, just want to show you guys the battery life uh, left on both watch so on the vivo active uh, 3 music it's 77% uh, left so I started with 100% so it used about 23% of the battery for this 30 mile ride and um, on my uh, Phoenix 5x um, I think it's showing 87% let me double check so yes, 87%. So it used 10% less battery. So we only used 13% of the battery for the entire ride, and uh, which is pretty great. So um, from what I talked before, that the battery life, you know, on the uh, on the Phoenix 5X is definitely much longer than the battery on the Vivo Active 3 Music. So um, okay, we're gonna go inside and then we're gonna take a look at the data and make a conclusion. So now we are back at home and. Uh, I actually loaded the three different tracks onto a website called mygpsfiles.com and this is actually a website that you can actually load different kinds of GPS uh, tracks uh, from your smartwatch and uh, it's going to display it graphically so you can compare different tracks in terms of accuracy and uh, whatnot. So um, of course the most interesting thing or the most thing I want to actually show you guys is the GPS accuracy which is displayed on the um, on the right area on the left area over here is a graphical chart which displays uh, a few different things you can choose heart rate you can choose elevation recorded and uh, you can choose the speed recorded uh, whatnot and uh, so let's see um, interestingly I'm gonna show you guys mostly the actual elevation and heart rate. Um, the speed, as you can see over here, um, the Galaxy Note 9 actually recorded a very inconsistent speed right over here. This is my phone. So obviously the data is not correct and it's way off. So we're gonna actually forget about that uh, later on when, t when we take a look at the actual speed recording uh, on both watches. And uh, right now we're gonna focus on the elevation, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna focus on the map on the right area. So I'm just gonna like minimize the other areas a little bit so we can take actual look at the maps. So um, as you can see, I started near my house, um, right over here around, around the corner. In the green line is the Galaxy Note 9, which is my phone. Uh, it's connected to my chest heart rate strap. And over here on the Phoenix 5X, it's a blue line, and Vivo Active 3 is a red line. So, um, of course, ideally, all the data should be, you know, in one single line, but obviously it's not. You can see actual, actually like six lines because I'm doing a round trip. So on the way back and going over to the, uh, to the keys, um, it recorded uh, six different lines because it's a round trip. So, um, Let's let's just take a quick look. Um, over here, the map I'm using is uh, OpenStreetMap. So this is a free open source map that a lot of um, different websites uses. Um, optionally, I could actually also use the word imagery. I think it's a European um, service or the European data source, uh, but it's fairly accurate and it actually reflects uh, uh, some of the new constructions around the area. So I think the map is accurate. Uh, to a certain degree and uh, so over here I can compare to see if actually the lines are uh, actually on the road or off the road um, but the downside with this this imagery is I can't really zoom in further this is uh, um, the most it can zoom in over here so if I'm using OpenStreetMap I can zoom in a lot more and then compare you know different different maps
So let's get started. Um, right off the bat, you can see different watch recorded different locations at the starting point right over here. Um, obviously, uh, none of them is actually accurate. Uh, so take it as a grain of salt. And then at once as I, as I get started, now this area I have some trees uh, lined on two sides. So um, the one that's off the most is actually the Garmin uh, Phoenix 5X. It showed, it showed me actually in the middle of the road, but I'm not. I'm actually on the side of the road right over here. So the phone and the uh, Vivo Active 3 actually did a pretty good job recording my actual location. Uh, and then as I turn, you can see um, they're all turning pretty good at the at the area over here and then I'm also this this area is kind of tree lined uh, so they all stayed a uh, pretty accurately over here but then as you can see on the way back this is uh, the back track uh, the back track is going north uh, two of the device the two of the watches actually recorded me on the other side of the street um, over here it's a round circle uh, so let's open up the image uh, Garmin showed the Phoenix 5X showed me all of the circle and uh, the other device actually showed me uh, tracked me pretty accurately and then as we go over here on the um, as we go over here I think I went yes I did went this way so over here going down the road both showed pretty accurately now the phone is a little off over here um, something I have to tell you at the very beginning is actually the phone app records the data every five seconds. So compared to the other two watches, which actually records data every second. So the line is much smoother on, on both watch, uh, on both watches. Um, as you can see over here, it's, it's much smoother. And over here it's, it's recording every five seconds. So it's sometimes it's a little off, uh, when it's going around the corners, uh, whatnot. And, um, over here, on this road, it's actually uh, a lot of trees lining both sides. So uh, you can see actually most all the watches uh, struggled a little bit uh, with the with this area. It's a lot of trees around this road. Uh, the only thing that's accurate is the cell phone. Uh, the cell phone is accurate for the most part right off on the sidewalk, kind of. Um, right over here actually you know what when we lay out the data it looks like the Garmin is actually more accurate the other the other two uh, the, the watch the fin the Viva Active 3 the red line and the green which is my phone is actually off a little bit so as we go um, those areas are all tree lined um, they did a pretty good job like staying on the road uh, as long as you're not turning so that is good uh, so this is uh, the going trip and this is on the way back trip. Uh, over here we can see all the, all the device did pretty good over here because there's not much trees uh, around the area. Now over here we're actually turning onto US-1 which is a major uh, highway or major freeway uh, in the Miami area. And uh, over here under under the, uh, the train track uh, along the US-1 is actually um, what's called underlying it's a bike path uh, going pretty far uh, from like alongside the actually train track the real the uh, above ground train track uh, near the US one so uh, this is where things get interesting because it's it's for the most for the most part under the train track um, as you can see all the device actually struggled quite a lot under the train track I would say um, none of them are superbly accurate both of them like all of them are actually slightly off under the train track now this entire way this entire way is actually train track so despite the fact it's under the under the train track the steer did a pretty decent job like following the actual track under the train um, i would give kudos to all of them all of the all of the devices right over here now uh, the Phoenix 5x actually uh, did something crazy uh, over here on the highway it showed me actually going onto the onto the highway which obviously is is not right um, so over here the Phoenix 5x actually struggled a little bit getting a accurate signal 
um, the other devices actually stayed pretty consistent. But again, the 5X actually did just fine on the way back. So um, there's no problem over there on the way back. I only had a problem going to the um, going to the keys. And over here, as you can see, the 5X also struggled a little bit. It showed me on the road, um, on the actual like uh, traffic with the cars, which is not right. And over here, also again under the train track, uh, for the most part, is accurate. Um, actually, at this uh, like under the under the train track, I would say the phone is actually most accurate. Uh, in this regards, maybe because it's recording every five seconds instead of every second. So when it recalculates, um, it recalculates to a more smooth line, where the other two watches actually records every second. So when it calculates, it calculates uh, all of the track, obviously, uh, more often. Um, but over here, as you can see, the, the Vero Active 3 actually went off the track, went into the buildings. Um, as we go, go along the line, the 5X off, and over here, the 5X is again off quite a lot. The other device on the way back or at, at this area where also a lot of trees, the phone is off quite a lot. Uh, it showed me actually onto, onto the trees, which is, which is actually funny. Okay, so as we go along, uh, again, uh, all the, the three music is off over here. So what I want to actually just tell you guys is that none of the watch actually is is that accurate in terms of uh, data recording when the situation is very tough. Like, for example, there are a lot of trees, as you can see right over here, or um, there are under when you are under a bridge or under a train track or something like that. It, none of them are accurate. They're accurate to a certain degree. They don't take you like way off the path, like right over here to a different street. Uh, they don't do that, but then again, none of them are super accurate in that regard. Over here, uh, I went onto a above ground passageway over here, and then I went under into the, the street hidden right over here. And then, so as we go along the Miami shores, we are going uh, to the actual keys area. So over here, it's very nice tree lined uh, um, a boulevard right over here. All the watch did just fine. Uh, looks like the the Vivo Active 3 actually went off track over here into the trees, into the actual park, which is right, which is not here. The actual path is right over here. So again, the the phone actually records some, uh, a much less smooth data than the other devices. Um, over here, as we actually get onto the the bridge. Um, as you can see, all the device actually performed quite nicely for the most part. You can see very smooth lines. All the all the lines actually are almost aligned because there's no there's no trees um, and it's very open area. Uh, over here, it shows the 5x off just just very slightly, but in general, I would say it's accurate. Um, again, same thing on the way back over here on the bridge. So as we go over here. Um, that's where I want to actually show you how far off the elevation chart is. Okay, so this is a bridge called, I think, William Powell Bridge. This is actually the highest point um, in the Miami area. This is the, uh, the tallest part. Uh, I think the actual bridge measures uh, 77 foot high uh, in its tallest area. But if you actually look, I'm going to show you the elevation data over here. Okay. So it kind of shows right over here where the bridge is the highest point. Um, if you look at the data on the top, it shows um, 144, which, which is measured by the uh, Vivo Active 3 Music. And if you go to Garmin, it shows 122 at the, or 123 at the highest point. And of course, if you see it on the phone, it shows I'm, I'm at the sea level, which is totally, totally incorrect. Um, it shows uh, elevation of 12, not right. So the actual elevation is around here, 77. So none of the watch recorded accurate elevation at all. Um, I think this is a problem with all the sports watches or all the watches with uh, uh, even the uh, barometers that used to measure elevation data. Like none of them are accurate. 
Now, uh, the phone is way off, okay, and the other is actually overshoot by at least uh, 50 to uh, almost 70 foot. Um, so um, that's something I want to show you really quick, which is the elevation data is, is totally inaccurate. And uh, in terms of, you know, the baseline, it's inaccurate, but um, it actually records, you know, your, your elevation gain um, or, or your descent fairly well. Um, it's just not accurate at the, uh, at the base point. Okay, keep that in mind. So um, we're gonna go back to, let's see. So we're gonna go back to the actual map over here. Um, what I want to show you is as the track, I mean, as the area opens, all the GPS device performs, you know, flawlessly. There's, there's no problem with all the devices when you actually are at a very open area. On the keys, it's pretty open. Even though over here there are some trees, it's still fairly open and wide uh, on the boulevard. And uh, over here, as we go into the city, as you can see, not much trees. All the GPS device performs excellent. Like, I'm not complaining at all. Uh, they're doing a great job. And as we go over here uh, into the Billbax State Park, um, let me open up the map, map a little more. Um, you can see as we go into the, the tree covered area, you know, that's where things, you know, gets tricky. Uh, things get jumpy a little bit, you know, and uh, then as we get onto open road, it, it goes back to good again, open road, open road, and those are the trees, we're inside the trees. As you can see, the, the Phoenix 5X is off slightly, and over here, the, um, the, the Vivo Active 3 is off uh, quite a lot. Um, it's showing me uh, right off the track. The track is right over here. Okay, so as we go over here, again, open area, no problems. Everything lined up. Getting to the trees, and then the problem comes, and things doesn't get lined up. So I think this would give you a fairly good idea on um, the GPS accuracy, uh, actually in most of the smartwatches, which uh, if you have good, if you have good GPS signal, none of the watch, even the phone is not going to give you any problems at all. Um, in the trees, I think it pretty much all depends on a, a whole bunch of uh, variables. It's actually not your watch's fault, but when you're actually at a covered area, you know, signal signal gets bounced around. Um, and when you get into, you know, a uh, very populated area where there's a lot of high, like tall high rises and buildings, things also gets, the signal also gets bumped around. So nothing is going to be super accurate. Keep that in mind. Uh, over here, as you can see in the city, the River Active 3 music went off the track, almost went into the waters. As I stopped in the park for a quick break, um, there's a little pavilion. As you can see, the actually the Vector 3 music landed perfectly into the location where I was sitting in the pavilion. And the other two devices actually showed me uh, just circling around outside the pavilion, which is interesting. So um, I think we can already draw a conclusion over here that is, um, all the device, the Phoenix 5X, the Veracruz 3 music actually performs quite well uh, in terms of GPS uh, accuracy in the open area. When it comes to the area that's covered a lot by the trees, uh, things get uh, things gets inaccurate, but then relatively, they are still relatively accurate staying on the track. Um, it's just not, it's really hard to draw a definitive conclusion on the accuracy uh, of all those smartwatches because there are just too many variables, uh, you know, um, contributing to the inaccuracy of those watches, you know, in tough spots. Like, I would say, like, around those areas are really, really tough because um, it's, for the most part, under the rails. What I want to say is any of those watch would do just fine, you know, in terms of GPS tracking. And uh, um, in terms of total distance tracked, as you can see, uh, they're all very similar. Like um, the Phoenix 5X actually tracked the most distance. Um, the Vivo Active 3 tracked 31.4 and uh, the Galaxy Note tracked 31.3. Uh, so like within 0.2 miles is, is a very acceptable, you know, uh, variable for a 32 mile tracking. Um, so I, I would say all the actually all the device did an excellent job. 
So when we take a look at the heart rate data, um, interestingly, the the green line, which is a Galaxy Note 9, which is my phone, which is paired with a chest strap, actually, I would say this should be the most accurate uh, heart rate recording. But unfortunately, the app only records heart rate every five seconds. So the line is kind of jagged. Um, it's not as smooth as the other two uh, devices on my wrist. I always consider wrist heart rate less accurate. Um, you can only use it as a reference, uh, especially if you're doing, you know, sports activities. I find the heart rate slightly accurate um, compared to the actual chest rate strap. Uh, I'm sorry, chest heart rate strap. So take a look at the data. As you can see, like both uh, both wrist smartwatches actually measured fairly well uh, following the actual the actual heart rate on measured on my chest strap and uh, sometimes they go off quite a lot i don't know what happened but uh, they just do and uh, over here when the heart rate drops they also drops like way below uh, what the actual heart rate is uh, compared to what's measured on my chest uh, heart rate strap uh, which is interesting so take a look at the data uh, I'm going through all the all the areas so as you can see sometimes uh, one of the watch would mess up on the heart rate and then they would jump back to normal and for the most part they are they're very accurate so when you see some line that goes way off you know you know it's not accurate and then sometimes if there's a big jump in the heart rate change maybe you are taking a rest stop or maybe you are doing a sudden burst movement the both of the watch actually struggles to uh, catch up and uh, so that's something that I found on all the uh, Garmin smartwatches that I've used in the past and as you can see most of the data is fairly well recorded right over here so as you can see the lines gets off and off more at the end so i would say it's probably the website's problem it's not the uh the actual heart rate um it's not the actual the it's not the problem of um you know the measurement so as you can see it's like way off over here um so don't i mean disregard the data at the at very end at the very beginning um you can see the heart rate is just fine. So uh, the conclusion is the wrist heart rate is always not going to be is always going to be less accurate than the chest heart rate strap. So I use them as a reference. Sometimes if I want the most accurate heart rate, I would probably just pair my heart rate strap with either one of those watches and you know get a very accurate recording on the heart rate. But then again, uh, this video is actually um, I want to compare the GPS accuracy of all the devices. Um, uh, with the cell phone so interestingly at the very end I want to point out that the Indomono app also as you can see it tracks every five seconds so the line is less uh, less smooth than the other apps um, but in terms of GPS accuracy I would say both three devices did just fine um, there's there is no significant difference in terms of GPS performance so any of those watch would do just a fine job it all depends on you know which advanced feature or advanced function that you want to get in any of those watches or if you want to just go really cheap just use your phone it's totally fine it records uh, it records the data just fine and I did you know a almost three hour workout and uh, the phone hold up just fine with lots of batteries left um, if you're doing ultra sports extreme sports triathlons you might need the Phoenix 5x for the extended battery life but otherwise, if you're doing bike runs, walk, or just walking and general hiking, um, all those devices should do just fine, even the cell phone. Okay, so here we are uh, with the two watches that we've uh, just uh, talked about. Um, I think each watch is going to do their job perfectly fine. Um, it all depends on what specific feature set that you need from the watches so if you are still having doubts on what kind of sports watch to get or what kind of garment sport wa sports watch to get just go on their website pick a few watches that you're interested in, and use the comparison tool that i did uh, i show you guys earlier and find a specific feature set that you must have and then you pick the watch out of those feature sets based on your needs both watches is gonna 
track GPS perfectly fine. And uh, both watch actually also tracks uh, sleep. So your sleep, uh, like it also, not only it tracks sleep, it also tracks the REM uh, sleeping patterns. Uh, whether it's accurate, I'm not sure, but it do track the deep sleep, the light sleep and the REM sleep uh, cycles. So uh, whether they are accurate or not, uh, I don't know, but it does track sleeping. Um, and of course your daily, you know, steps counting and, uh, um, most importantly, your timekeeping, uh, both watches going to do just fine. So really depends on exactly what you need out of a sports smartwatch. And, uh, if you guys have any questions about, uh, any of those watches, feel free to ask me in the comments section. Uh, I'll try my best to answer for you guys. And if you did find something that I said was incorrect in the video, uh, please do also correct me in the comments section and I'd be happy to hear it. Um, again, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day.